Well, welcome back to the channel, guys, and this is 20 things to try with pellets. 20 things to try with pellets. So as we all know, pellets are an amazing bait. They catch loads of fish, they're convenient, they're just brilliant, they're really versatile, there's loads of stuff you can do with them. So I thought, why not do 20 great tips to help you catch more fish with pellets? So tip number one, expanders. Now, expanders are a brilliant bait, they catch loads of fish, and if you don't know what they are, basically it's a pellet that absorbs water, puffs up, and then you can get a hook through it. They're a soft bait. Now they've been used for years and years and years, and there's you know loads of different great ones out there on the market, but at Sonya Baits we've got this really nice pellet called a Pro Expander. Now basically, um, with normal expanders, you've normally got to pump them to make them sink. Now with these, they've been treated with an oil that makes them sink, so all you need to do is soak them and they'll sink straight away. There's no need to pump them. So they're really simple baits to use. Now to prep them, all you do, you just need a nice little tub and some water, that is all you need. Basically, all I do, I use these little zip-up bowls, put however many I want in. You don't need loads, that's one thing with expanders. The, even when you do a tiny little poundful, there's normally enough for a session. So, you know, you don't need to go overboard, but obviously do as many as you want. And then this is as complicated as it is. All you need to do, get some water in there. And the key, the key part for this, in my opinion, is to give the pellets plenty of water to thing. And if you can see that, there's, 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 a, there's a tiny layer of pellets in the bottom, but the, the, that is like three quarters full with water, that little tub. And that just means that there's plenty of water in there and it stops them from cracking. Then the only other thing you need to do is zip that little tub up, stick it in the fridge overnight or on your garage floor, shed floor, that kind of thing. Somewhere that's gonna be a nice cool environment, stick them in the fridge and then by the morning they'll be perfect. And in true Blue Peter fashion, here we go. We've got some here that have been soaked overnight. Just lovely pellets, as you can see, soft, stay on the hook well, and more importantly, sink every time. So really nice pellets, those. They're the six mils, they come in two mil, four mil, six mil and eight mil. So whatever you fancy, there's a pellet there for you. Right, tip number two. Um, we obviously spoke about how to prep the Pro Expanders, but another little trick is to actually dye them. They take colors very well, they take flavors very well. Um, the way I like to do it, there's loads of different dyes out there. I actually like to use the little lava rocks. The reason is, these have got a really strong, intense dye on them. And when you put them in the water with the Pro Expanders, they take it on brilliantly. I've done a little, they're still, they're still soaking, but you get the idea. Basically what I've done here, um, I filled this little tub up, as you can see there's some pellets in there and then I put some of the, what colour did I put in? I put some of the yellow lava rocks in there and as you can see it's turned the water a vibrant yellow colour. Now once those pellets have soaked up and swelled up like they do, that they will be a lovely golden colour. Now obviously you can do that with whatever colour you want, red's a really good colour, especially for the method. A nice little red expander on there can work wonders. Yellow's good, it turns them that golden colour which is how the expanders used to be, um, but that is as simple as it gets. Just put them in, when, when you're soaking your pellets, stick a pinch of them in and they will turn a beautiful colour. Now tip number three, and that's to toughen the expanders up. Obviously, when you pole fish in, soft expanders are brilliant. You can ship them out, they don't really come off. But when you feed a fish in, I really like to use an expander on the method feeder. And I, sometimes I feel like, especially if I'm leaving it out for a long time, there's some venues where, you know, you might be waiting 15, 20 minutes for a bite. It's nice to have a bit of peace of mind that your bait's still on. And what I like to do is toughen my pellets up a little bit. So what I do, obviously it's up to you how you do this, but I like to use a, a thick liquid. The Bait Boost is my choice. Um, there's loads on the market. Look for liquid flavourings that are, are thick, you know, much thicker than water. And, and basically they get inside the expander and toughen them up and just make them a bit more durable. So what I like to do, I've got my pellets that I've already prepared. They're already soaked. So take a generous sort of pinch, just like that. You can squeeze off any excess water if you like in another little tub. Then take the bait booster or you know whatever sort of liquid you want. This is the pineapple and coconut one, it smells beautiful. Just drizzle it over the top of them 
quite generously of course and stick that in there I don't know if you can see that hopefully you can see that yeah so they're now covered in that liquid and basically what that does like I say the pellets sort of draw it in and and to just become a bit more rubbery I don't want them to be like bullets you know what I mean I don't want them to be can you see that sort of I don't want them to be uh, absolutely rock hard uh, I still want them to be soft that's the whole reason why I've got an expander on in the first place but this just just gives me that peace of mind that my pellets are, uh, are just that little bit tougher so what I do I, let, I get get the pellets to a soaked stage put that liquid on there back them in you know whack them back in the fridge put the zip you know zip the lid up stick them back in the fridge and by morning they'll be perfect a bit more rubbery and perfect for the method feeder Another beautiful little hook bait option when you're either fishing the method feeder or the bomb, particularly when the bottom is soft. So what I mean by that is, if the lake you're fishing on has got a lot of sill or a lot of debris on the bottom, you know, stuff that it's difficult to actually present your, your bait on top of, then a popped up hook bait can be really good. And a popped up expander, believe you me, can catch you loads of fish. Now you're gonna say, well, your pellets sink. Well, there's an easy way around that. You could use an expander that, that doesn't already sink, of course you can. But I just like to use this little trick here. Basically, if you squeeze one of these pro expanders, if you just squeeze them, all of the uh, oil and the, the water comes out and they float. So give them a squeeze and they float. So basically, I can, I can transform even a sinking pro expander into a lovely little popped up hook bait just by giving them a, sque a squeeze. So a really, really nice little tip that is. Just squeeze all that excess oil and stuff out of there and they float like little corks. And that can be a brilliant hook bait. Popped up three or four inches above a method or if, you, if you're fishing the bomb, you could obviously put, pop it up a long way off the bottom. But I found that if you put a couple of little shot on the hook length, probably that far from the hook, pop it up like that far, you can catch loads of fish. And that works really effectively when the bottom is extremely soft. So there you go, just, just squeeze it out in the water and you get a lovely little floating hook bait. Okay, so tip five and the last one in this little expander section that we've, we've just done. Um, riddled expanders is something that loads of people know about but rarely use. Uh, and basically all it is, it's just smashing your, uh, your pre-done expanders, smashing through a riddle and you get this beautiful like, it's like, obviously it's like smashed up pellets, um, but it's not super fine. So effectively you're feeding, um, not ground bait, but it's like a wet, um, really attractive sort of feed bait basically. Um, and it's just really effective. You can squeeze it in a little cage feeder, you can feed it through a pole pot, all manner of things you can do with it, but it's super attractive. So what we're gonna do, quickly show you how to do it, it is as simple as this. Basically, get your expanders, get them in there. Just stick that to one side. Hopefully the wife won't see this video. Get them through there, smash them through. This is a four mil riddle, but obviously it's up to you, whatever you wanna choose. Some of those pellets are a little bit tough still because I did them quickly this morning. But just smash that through that four mil riddle. And like I say, I've had loads of success with this through a cage feeder particularly. In the winter, for skimmers, you know, when, when times are hard, a little hair rigged four mil expander, a bit of this through the cage feeder can be an absolute winner. So there you go, that's the four mil, four mil riddle. And what you're left with, is this beautiful little sloppy expander, crushed expander basically. And it's just a nice little way, if you haven't got any crushed expander ground bait or whatever, that is just as attractive and it just pulls in loads of fish. It's nice and sloppy, nice and wet, nice and heavy. It'll catch you loads of fish. Tip six, skinned hard pellets. We all know how effective hard pellets are. Just literally using them straight from the bag, you can use whatever, whatever you want. Pro feed pellets, thin perfect feed pellets, whatever you want, you can use them straight from the bag, of course you can. Um, but at this time of year, when the water cools, it can be a good idea just to skin them. And by that, I mean, like these are skinned pellets, and basically all I've done with them is given them a five second soak, 
and you just get this lovely, they're not soft, but they've just got, you've started the breakdown process. So it just makes them a little bit more palatable, you know, to the fish when they're not eating such hard bait. It also means that they sink at a uniform rate. Sometimes when you're fishing with hard pellets, especially like the Screttings type, um, when you're feeding them, they can get hung up in the surface tension. This just stops that. So you're getting the benefits of like a soaked formula in terms of uniform sink rate and breaking the surface tension, but you're also getting the hard pellet sort of element to it as well. Now all you do, like I say, this is super simple, but it's a great way to feed hard pellets. You can do it with four mils, six mils, eight mils, whatever you want, just give them a little skin. So all I've got here is some four mils in the pellet wetter, and I'm just gonna literally, one, two, three, four, five. As long as that, and I'm just gonna shake off all that water, just drain it out there, squeeze it out. I'm just gonna give it a little shake in the, in the sink. My missus will love this. And that's it. I'll just leave them in there now. They'll take on a little bit of that water. I've, sh I've shaken off all that excess. And what you'll be left with, and what you'll be left with is these lovely like skin formula pellets that are a brilliant option at this time of year. Tip seven, and that's oiled up feed pellets. Now I absolutely love using hard pellets throughout the year, but particularly in the summer months. Um, April to sort of October time is hard pellet season in my opinion. Uh, four mil and six mils uh, for sort of F1s and carp. And then for the big carp venues, you want eight mils and even 11 mils on some venues. Now, the key part of hard pellet fishing is that they're hard, and that sounds obvious, but the problem is a lot of pellets, once they enter the water, after a few minutes, especially when the water's warm, they'll break down and you'll actually be left with ground bait essentially on the bottom. They're certainly like puffed up pellets. Um, so to prolong the, um, the time that the pellets stay as a hard pellet to make the fish easier to catch, because there's less stuff on the bottom for them to feed. You want, basically you want the fish to pick up individual pellets. You don't want them rooting around for ground bait because when fish are rooting around for ground bait and small particles on the bottom, they become harder to catch. They're, they're, they're just snuffling around. Whereas if you've got hard pellets on the bottom dotted around like that, the fish are picking them up, moving, picking them up, moving. It just makes the fish easier to catch, in my opinion. Um, so to, to oil the pellets up, it's a simple case. These are some fishery pellets from Shearsby Valley that I was using this summer. Um, they're just standard four mils. And what I've done, I've put them in a little food bag, you could do it in whatever you want. And I've just drizzled some, some oil on there. You can use sinking, uh, sinking pellet oil from Sonu, you can use olive oil, I've used olive oil in the past, you can use fish oil, whatever you want to use, what gives you confidence. The key is to do it uh, well in advance of the, of the session or match. So what I do, stick it, you know, if I'm, if I'm going the following, say I've been to Shearsby uh, the Saturday, um, and I know I'm going the following week, the following Saturday, I'll buy a bag of pellets before I go home, get them here, get them in a bag, just like that. You can see the markers in there. Put them in a bag, drizzle some whatever oil I want on there, sinking pellet oil. Of oil. I, I quite like olive oil, I've got to be honest. Um, and I'm talking a small amount, just drizzle it on there, um, just nice and light. Give them a shake around so that every pellet's coated. St uh, tie the bag up, you know, so no air can get to it and, and just stick them in the shed. Have a look at them maybe Wednesday, Thursday. If they're still not looking like they've taken, you know, they could do with taking even more oil on then just give them another little coating. And it's a case of just building it up. And the more times you do it, the better they get, the slower they'll break down. So get that, get them in there, do them nicely in advance. I've got loads of bags. I just do them sort of a pint in pint bags because I know that that when I get fish in, you know, it's rare that I use more than a pint of hard pellets, to be honest, unless I'm on like a real big cart water. But um, at places like Shearsby and that, you know, a pint of hard pellets goes a long way. So I just do them in pint-sized bags and they, they've had probably a real good treatment of oils and they're absolutely perfect. They'll all sink and they'll stay as a pellet on the bottom. Real good tip that, get some sinking pellet oil and give them a little dose in. Right, tip eight, and that is blown feed pellets. Now, this is something that uh, anglers who go to sort of Woodland View do an awful lot. It's something I've done an awful lot in the past as well. Um, places like Whiteacres, I've caught a lot of fish on this as well. And, and by blown feed pellets, I mean over soaking feed pellets so that they blow up. Um, 
and you can even put them on the hook. So like a six mil pellet, which these are, end up becoming, you know, sort of eight mil hookable pellets. Um, these are a bit trickier to prepare. Then, that's wrong, they're not tricky to prepare, but they just need a bit of care and attention, a bit of love. So whatever, whatever pellets on the fishery, just have a look, have a go at this. You know, you need to do this at home. So basically, all I've done there is given them a really good soak in. I think you can see that. They could probably do with even more water, these could. Um, and what I'll do, I'll give them a real good soak in, so I'll leave them to stand uh, for probably half an hour. I'll, I'll, I'll give them a good, I'll fill the bowl with, with pellets. Um, you want a bigger bowl if you can, because you want to make sure that they get an even soak. Uh, give them a 10, 15 minute soak, uh, drain the water off. And then what I like to do, if I was actually doing this, you know, for a match or whatever, I'd then, Stick them in a little poly bag, a little food bag. Give them plenty of air, like that. That sort of thing, give them a shake around. And just leave them in the fridge overnight. And basically they'll just absorb all that water. They'll become like, like expanders basically, but they're just big, heavy expanders that the fish are used to seeing because at the end of the day, all the feed pellets end up like that. You know, when, when they've been fed into the lake, eventually, they'll end up like big puffy pellets and, and that is a great way to feed them and fish them on the hook. So basically you're matching the hatch, you're fishing on the hook what you're using as feed. So if I did like a couple of pints of them, they'd be absolutely tremendous. They'd be, they'd be a lovely feed and hook bait. They're a bit fiddly, they come off the hook a lot easier than an expander would, but for some reason there's days when these pellets will get you a bite when nothing else will and they're just more effective. Tip number nine is mushy feed pellets. Now, I've been experimenting an awful lot this year on using overweighted pellets as feed for margin fishing. Now, we all know that ground bait has been the go-to feed for fishing in the edge, and rightly so, it catches loads of fish. But I have noticed that fish are becoming harder to catch over it. The venues I go to, for example, you can see it. The fish blow it up into the margins where you can't catch them into the shallow water, and you just you just know there's loads of fish there and it's hard to catch them. I switched to feeding sloppy pellets, really overwet pellets, and the difference was vast. Um, basically, what I do, I absolutely saturate my pellets. So I'm talking, if I'm if I'm feeding micros, I'll, I'll feed, I'll say I've got an inch of them in my bowl, I'll put that much extra water on top and leave them overnight. And what you're left with is like fully saturated pellets that have already started to break, break down. I do it with four mils too, as you can see here, I've got some four mils that are, again, they're turning to mush. If I left them any longer, they'd be completely mushy, but I'd like that. The, the reason is, especially with the micros, you can feed them in a sloppy ball that gets straight to the bottom because it's heavy, because it's full of water, it's absolutely saturated. It gets straight to the bottom, there's minimal cloud comes off it, but importantly, you're still giving them that small particle size that they want when they're rooting around in the margins. Um, it can work for shallow fishing too. A little sloppy ball can like break up on the surface, but it's a really, really attractive way of catching fish. And they just love that sort of sloppy pellet, like overwetted, I know Finn, uh, Andy Finley has been doing it at the Glebe as well, just feeding really sloppy, four mils and two mils down the edge. And you can see there, they're just breaking up to nothing. Um, and that, Overweight can be an absolutely brilliant edge, especially when fishing in the margins. Tip 10, and it's making paste out of pellets. It's something I've done all summer long, um, and it's something that I'll continue to do next year without a doubt. Um, basically, I use the, either the fishery pellets where I'm going, uh, but if I can, I'll use the, uh, I'll actually use the pro pellets, the two mil pros. Um, but any pellet's fine. It's, it's a great way of, if you've got any like half bags, you know what it's like, we're constantly getting half bags with, in this day and age of fishery pellets. Um, if you've got half bags lying around or anything like that, make a paste out of them. It's a great way of just getting rid of all them old pellets that you don't really want. Um, all I do, I put them in a bowl, a nice big bowl is best, maybe a, a bucket, a bait bucket or anything like that, because you're gonna need quite a lot. So the benefit of doing this is that it all becomes one. By that I mean, um, how I prepare them means that I can scoop out some, 
and use that as my feed and then mush it up a bit further and use it as a paste. So what I do, I basically scald the pellets. I get some uh, boiling water straight out of the kettle, flood the pellets with, with the boiling water, that's so important. Now, doing it with the boiling water breaks the pellets down faster, which obviously speeds the process up, but more importantly than that, it, um, it releases some, whatever it does, it, re it, like, it releases a smell and the, pe the pellets become incredibly strong smelling. And I don't know what it is, um, but it works. Um, I then, like I say, scoop off once, I'll leave them for an hour in that boiling hot and they'll soak it up and they'll get blown up and, and be all lovely. Um, I'll scoop out what I want to feed. So if I'm, you know, if I do six pints of pellets, for example, I'll scoop out three pints for feed and then I'll scoop out three pints for my paste. Uh, it's then a case of just smashing it up with your fingers. So basically all I've done with this is just run it. This is, this is the stuff that's been left and I'll just run it through my fingers, smash it up so it's nice and smooth. You can't do this enough really. You could use a fine riddle, I guess, if you wanted to, a flour sieve maybe, but I don't think an odd lump actually hurts this. I think it, it, does, it, it does it the world of good having an odd lump in there. So that's what you're left with, a beautiful soft paste that's fully broken down, you know, the pellets in there. Have, have been scalded so they've got that lovely release of smell and flavor but it'll make a nice paste and that even you know as wet as i can make that will stay on the bottom and not break down I'll, I'll, i've actually got a video to come proving how long it sits on the bottom for ground baked paste is great but it breaks down quickly this doesn't it'll be as soft as you want it and it'll just stay on the bottom until a cart comes and gets it um, if you're a river angler you can use halibut style pellets, halibut pellets, trout pellets, scald them in the same way. They might take a little bit longer, but scalded trout and halibut pellets is a brilliant bait for barbel and chub. They absolutely love it. And again, it, 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 strong, it smells incredibly strong when you do it like that. So a real winner that is, something that I've done loads of this summer, scalded pellets. Like I say, it gets rid of all your half bags that you've got lying around. Make a paste out of them instead of throwing them in the bin. Tip 11, and it's these beauties, Robin Reds. Now, this is nothing new, and it's certainly not something I've come up with my own, um, you know, by myself, but using a red pellet on the hook when you're loose feeding brown pellets, your standard fishery pellets, can be a real edge, especially when you're fishing shallow. These little beauties, they're a deep red color. Let me just get some out. They're a deep red color, absolutely fantastic sort of pellet. They're, um, they're a high quality pellet as well. The fish like them because obviously the smell and the oil in there, but the, the most important factor is the, the actual deep red color. And for some reason, when you're fishing shallow, they just seem to pick these out every single time. So if I'm fishing shallow for F1s, for example, I'll use a four mil. If I'm fishing shallow for carp, I'll use a six mil. And I've always got a few eight mils, which are actually pre-drilled. Um, so I can even fish two on a hair if I want to, but I'll fish the eight mil ones for carp but they're just a brilliant hook bait. And even when I'm pellet waggler fishing, feeding eight mil pellets, I'll probably use a six mil, one of these on the hook. I just feel like you miss less bites. The deep red color, I believe anyway, just produces a, a, a dark silhouette. So when the fish are coming up intercepting pellets, I just think that these stand out that little bit better. Um, they're a great method hook bait as well. You know, pop one in a band and you'll catch loads of fish. So always carry a few of them around. Get yourself a bag, bag of every size and they will last forever. What I do, I just take one of those little zip up uh, EVA cases that we showed you earlier with a mixed size in there, a pinch of each one, and a bag like that will last you years. Don't tell the boss that, but the bag like that will last you years. Tip 12 then, and something that I've sort of done for a long, long time, and I've seen some other really good anglers, Jamie Hughes for, as a prime example, someone who does this, um, and that's grooved pellets. Now, uh, by groove pellet, it's as simple as it sounds. Basically, I, on my six mil and eight mil hard pellets, particularly my eight mils, um, I'll just put a tiny little groove just down one side so that when I'm you know, clipping my bait band into it, there's a little groove for the, pellet to, for the band to sit in. And I just believe it just stays on there that much better. So if I'm chucking in and out with a waggler, it just, just grips it that little bit better and also hides the band a little bit. It's a simple, simple operation. I've got some six mils, which are a bit more fiddly. Eight mils are easier. Um, you want a hacksaw blade, really, but this little fine file does the job okay as well. Uh, and basically, I just, just find an, a nice edge and literally file in or cut in with a hacksaw blade, a little groove like that, 
And that is enough to stop your pellet band popping off. It just gives it something to key to and is a great little way of making sure your hard pellet stays on. Right, so tip 13, and this one is mix them up. Now, we all know that fish absolutely love microbes. They can't get enough of them, but that can obviously pose a problem as well in the fact that in the summer months particularly, you can't really use a micro on the hook. You know, you, no matter what, it's just, a t it's just too small, but the fish just love them and they'll actually become preoccupied with them at times. So what is a nice little trick, and it'll just get you out of jail on some occasions, is just to mix in four mil pellets. So as you can see there, I've probably got, I don't know, three quarters micros to a quarter four mil pellets. Just soften four mils the same, and it just gives them, you know, something else to pick out so that they're not just feeding on micros. Um, a nice little trip is that can work really well on a method feeder as well. So just a real quick one that, but sometimes mixing in a few four mils can make all the difference. Right, tip 14. Uh, we're cracking through these now. And this one is all about crushed expander ground bait. Now, I haven't actually got any here because I've, I've just run out, but when it comes to sort of F1s and skimmers particularly, crushed expander is one of the number one fish attractors. Basically, it's as the name suggests, these little beauties crushed down, milled nice and fine, and it is just pure, there's nothing else in there. So our Super Crush Expander, for example, is just 100% expander pellets. Um, the beauty of that is you can feed tiny amounts of it. I'm talking thumbnail size balls or loose. And it's just, I don't know, even in the winter when there's no fish in your peg, tap a bit of that in and you will get signs of life. Fish just love it. It's, it's unoffensive because it's not very strong. It's, it's a pretty soft, um, weak smelling ground bait but it's just there's something in it that just pulls them every single time. So in the winter, always carry some crushed expander. And if you are, you know, struggling for bites, tap a bit of that in, nice and dry, and you'll get bites, no problem at all. Tip 15, and that is preparing micros for the, for the method feeder. Um, micros, without a doubt, are the number one fish catcher around a method feeder. Um, they're just brilliant. They're easy to prepare. Um, they catch loads of fish. Fish just love them. Um, match it up with either an expander on the hook or a, a bandum or a hard pellet. You know, even a piece of corn will work. But the key thing is, the, the thing that the fish are attracted to is the two mil pellets. Um, obviously there's loads on the market, different two mils, and they'll all do a job. Um, to prepare them, basically I've got these. These have had the, the trusty soaking time. And as you can see there, they bind nicely. They're going on a method feeder. No problem at all, absolutely perfect. There's no liquids on there or anything like that. These have just had a nice soak. Right. It's sort of, a, it's an age old sort of formula really for soaking sort of two mil pellets and four mil pellets. And that is to give them one minute per mil size of pellet. So by that, I mean, uh, if it's a two mil pellet then soak it for two minutes, four mil, four minutes. So. It seems to work, and at the minute, the current batch of these pro-feed pellets, it's working out lovely. They've had the two minute soak. So all I do is grab myself my trusty pellet wetter, as always. Stick my pellets in there, however I need. Big bag this, so you, you know, you're never gonna get through a full bag of them, really, uh, especially on the method. Um, stick the pellet wetter in there, as you can see. Obviously, cover them in water. Cover them in water and give them the two minute soak. So I'm not gonna bore you with the with the, uh, <laughs> the two minutes, but what I would do, as soon as two minutes is up, time it, obviously take them then out of the water, like that, give them a shake, get rid of any excess water, that's key. You don't want pellets sat in excess water. So get rid of that, obviously roll it around, get rid of the excess water, even give them a squeeze if you like. They, they won't be soft at this point, so you can squeeze them and they're not gonna break up. Give them a squeeze like that. Get rid of the water. So we'll bosh that down the sink. And then all I do, I literally just, just stick them in there and, and just leave them for probably 
minimum half an hour really, um, but better even an hour. You could even do it in the morning before you went fishing. That would be ideal. Um, the key thing is to keep them moving. So even though they're just sat in there in the, in the, in the mesh, you know, every sort of few minutes while you're setting up, give them a little shake around. You don't want pellets grouped up on the bottom, basically. When they're sat on the bottom with pellets on top of them, you'll get some that are really wet and some that aren't wet at all at the top. So give them a move around, give them that sort of two minute soak, and then you'll end up with perfect pellets for the method feeder like that. They're, they're still pellets. They'll break down nicely, just like that and they'll stay on the method even in deep water. So the two minute soak rule, it's as old as the hills, but it does work. And combine that with the pellet wear, it's dead easy. Tip 16, and it's fill the gaps. Now, this is another method feeder related um, sort of tip really. And it is more down to fishery pellets. Um, Sometimes when you get different fishery pellets, they don't maybe don't bind how you want them to. Uh, and there's several ways of like making them stick. But one of them that works brilliantly is just adding a tiny bit of ground bait. And basically what I mean by filling the gaps is when you make a ball around the method feeder, if you look, there's like air gaps between the pellets. And sometimes if the pellets haven't got enough tack to them, as soon as they hit the water, they might look like they're staying on, but as soon as they hit the water, they actually fall off and ruin the trap that you're trying to create. So by filling the gaps, what I'm gonna use is a really fine fish meal ground bait. So something like this Thatcher's, it's dead fine, it's like dust, but it's got that strong fish meal uh, element to it. And I don't want a lot at all. So all I'm gonna do is just literally a dusting on them pellets. This will serve two purposes. It'll dry the pellets out a little bit, but in, importantly, it'll fill those gaps and just make sure that the pellets bind around the feeder really well. This can actually work as well if you want to feed them on a pole, hard balls. It just, just adds to the binding power, makes them a bit more attractive, of course, because the, the fish love the thatchers, but let's just add a, a fraction more. But just filling the gaps with a little bit of high quality ground bait like this can be really effective. So literally, just like that, so you've got nice dusty pellets that when made into a ball, as you can see now, all those gaps are filled with the ground bait and that will 100% get to the bottom and then break up nicely. Tip 17 is flavour it. Now pellets, especially micros, absorb flavours brilliantly and, and that can be a lovely little edge on your venue. So, the, the, my, the way I tend to stick to flavourings is if a venue is specimen fished a lot, by that I mean obviously the carp guys, then I will add a flavour to my pellets. If it's a match only venue, then I, I probably won't because the fish are so used to fishery pellets that that's what they're tuned into. However, if it sees a lot of carp anglers, then those guys put loads of flavour into the bait and, and our pellets by, you know, side by side with their bait is just really bland and boring. So. Even though we think that the fish meal pellets are strong smelling, compared to the baits that those guys are putting in, really high protein boilers, loads of liquids, they put loads of thick liquids in, um, into their baits, then ours are, like I say, just plain and boring next to it. So, there's loads of things you can add, but um, my favorite is the bait booster. Now this serves two purposes. Obviously, it's a very sweet flavor. So, um, this one is pineapple and coconut, but a banoffee one is, my, is another favorite, a firm favorite. Um, but it serves two purposes. Firstly, if, I'm, if, I, if I need to give my pellets a bit of extra stickiness, so um, say I'm using a method at distance or in deeper water, a little bit of this drizzled over the top of my micros will, will work wonders for that. But if I just want to give them a different flavour, then obviously adding this can work really well. Likewise, the haze. The haze will change the colour of the pellets, but also give them a smell. So we'll do it with these ones. We've got a little bit of the uh, Bonoffi haze. We'll dribble that on there nicely. Don't need to go mad of it, just swill them around, work that haze into them. And the beauty of the haze is it will actually tinge the colour of the pellets as well. So if you just, some venues, if it's really coloured, you might want a, a bit of a yellow tinge to them. There's loads of colours, you can do pink and all sorts. But there you go, I've got really nice golden sort of micros there with that sort of haze that banoffee smell, it's beautiful. So that's the yellow ones. And then like I say, if I want to do the banoffee, again, it's just, this is 
It smells like a pina colada, it's beautiful. And then get that in there. Like I say, you don't need a lot. Good, good to add to ground bait this as well, if you want to make your ground baits a bit stickier. So I've just, oh, that smells beautiful. So I'm just working that in with my fingers. Nice little bit of bait booster. And now I've got, it's changed the bait. It's made it stickier, which is obviously a bonus if you, if you method feed a fish in, but it's got a beautiful, strong, that pineapple and coconut smell, but it's also made them sticky. So real nice little twist that is. That, that, like I said, that's a sweet flavor, um, but these micros will accept that really well. And, and the, be the best thing about this is you can do it as you go. So if you, if you um, do up a batch of micros, and you, you know you don't want them all done with a flavour. Just try a few. Do a small amount. Do a handful. Drizzle a bit of that on and give it a try. And if it, if it doesn't work, then don't, you know go back to what you're using. But um, well worth a try. Adding flavours to your micros. Tip 18. And if you want to fish the method feeder, and but you you know you're worried about preparation, pellet prep, and all that sort of stuff then these little sticky method pellets are an absolute joy to use, to be honest with you. They're super simple. You don't need any liquids or powders or ground bait or anything to make your pellets bind. These have already been treated with the stuff you need to make them sticky. It's a foolproof way to use a method feeder. Prep for these could not be easier. And as you can see here, I've, I've, I've prepped these as I'm gonna show you, and they're just a beautiful tacky pellet. They go together. I've not added anything to these, and they're a beautiful <laughs> chocolate orange. They're good enough to eat that, beautiful. They've obviously got a few orange pellets mixed in there as well, just for a bit of visual attraction. But the most important thing is they bind together for that method feed. I mean, look at that. The, the key thing is, and one thing I've seen with other sort of sticky pellets is that they're not too sticky. I know that sounds stupid, but the last thing you want is for them to go around your feeder and just sit there, not breaking down. These will go on your feeder, but they'll break down quickly too. So a real good, real good pellet that is. Now preparation is as, as simple as it gets. Basically, you need to give them about an hour. So have that in mind. Don't do a whole bag at once because you're not going to need them. But if you do need some more throughout your session, just allow yourself an hour. So get a few in into my tub. I can't believe how good they smell. If you can see there, they've got little orange, little flecks of colour in there. Just a lovely little pellet. Now what I like to do is just cover them with water. So make sure every every pellet gets a nice little covering of water there. You can see that. But they're not flooded at all. They're just poking through. So we're just giving them a nice little covering. Make sure all the pellets are off the side. Leave them in there. Yet again, our two minute rule applies with these. Um, just soak them like that. You could use a pellet wetter if you wanted to. Um, soak it like that. Get rid of all the water and then let them stand for, like I say, that hour. And then you're left with a beautiful pellet that just binds like that, just really nicely. Um, one little tip I can give you, if you feel like your pellets are, are sort of losing that, that tackiness, just get some, get some water on your fingers, just a little bit, run it through the pellets and then that'll just revitalize them and make them just that little bit stickier once more. But a really nice product that. Um, and just takes the hassle out of, out of uh, preparing meth feeder pellets. Tip 19, and it is using big pellets around a method feeder. Now, there's a trend up and down the country at the moment of using four mils on the method, and with good reason too. You know, a lot of venues, there's a lot of small fish in them now, and you need a bait that's just gonna be a bit more a bit harder for them to eat and uh, a bit, you know, so that there's actually, by the time a carp comes across your method feeder, there's some bait left to attract it. Um, so a lot of people have been using four mil pellets around the method with great success. The only problem is with it, they can be a little tricky to prepare. Again, we've got some sticky method pellets, but this time we've got them in four mil. So these are four mil, Sticky method pellets in the Fin Perfect range, they're just, they're not flavoured, they've just got a coating on them that makes them stick. Now, I've done the four, mil, four minute rule, so yet again that applies. So what I'm left with, you can see that, after a four minute soaking, I then drain the water off them and let them, let them stand for an hour. And what I'm left with are pellets that are sticky, they're 
not soft all the way through, which is important because you don't want it to go to a mush on the feeder, but what we've got, a pellet that will stick around the method, no problem whatsoever. You see that, even with a, a gentle squeeze like that, I've got perfect pellets that will go around the method feeder, get to the bottom and then break up back into pellets. And you see that with your little like hook bait on top of that, that is a carp trap waiting to happen. Um, and that is a brilliant, brilliant tip. If you go to a venue where there's a lot of small skimmers, uh, a lot of silver fish that you just know are eating all your micros off your feeder before you get a bite off a carp, try this, it can work wonders. Tip 20, and the last one, is hooking micro pellets. Now, that might sound like lunacy, but trust me, when fishing becomes rock hard in the middle of winter, when the temperatures plummet, putting one or two micros on the hook, on a nice fine size 20 hook, can be an absolute winner for F1s. It's good for skimmers too. Now, these need a bit of love and attention to get them right for this. Um, they need like a, they need a bit of time to prepare properly. So always do this the night before, cover them with water, just as we would normally, just cover them so that there's just an odd pellet peeking through, then allow them to stand overnight. Basically, you could do them in this or a larger container, get them in the fridge, let them soak up that water. Again, same rule applies as before, mix them around with your hands and eventually you'll be left with Pellets that are swollen up more than normal. Nice, nice micros that are as big as you can get them. Basically then, you could, they're soft enough. They're like a, almost like a mini expander because they've, they've absorbed everything. They're as big as they're gonna get. Um, and then you're just gonna be able to hook one or two of those on a nice fine wire hook. And trust me, that is a deadly, deadly hook bait. So there you go, guys. That was 20 things to try with pellets. Um, I hope there's some little gems there that'll catch you loads of fish. The sky's the limit really with pellets. There's loads of stuff that you can do. And if you've got any tips at all that you'd like to share with other people, get them in the comments below. We'd love to hear them and thanks for watching.